Where does the source of godly manifestation come from? Where does the source of godly manifestation come from? So we already know that God is our source. God is the, the source, but what is the source's source? So how, what's, what's the tools that the source is used, the source uses, you know, to get things a, a across to us and in our hands? What's the source of godly manifestation? When I speak first, when I speak of manifestation, I'm really referring to position to receive. So put simply, where does the unshakable position for receiving God's provision come from? Let's say it again. Where does the unshakable position for receiving God's provision come from? Where does it come from? Well, God's supply flows from our commitment to walking the path of trust. God's supply flows from our commitment to walking the path of trust. So when we talk about position for receiving, anytime that we're in position to receive anything from God, then we're, we're in this unity, we're in this union of God's uh, flowing. So however it shows up, it's, it, all, it always shows up riding the wave of God's flow. So again, God's supply flows from our commitment to walking the path of trust. The longer we stay on this path, the more it strengthens and solidifies our ability to believe. So the more we stay connected and unified with God's process for receiving, when we're in position um, this way, then it, it, it strengthens us, it fortifies us, it, it gives us, you, you know, the, 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 the ability to believe and to believe greater. So belief, though, belief isn't just a feeling. It's a deep experiential understanding that comes from witnessing or experiencing evidence or the, the evidence of God's presence. The more that you can experience and witness God's presence, the more likely it is you're going to start being able to believe things that you had a difficult time believing prior. The more you experience God, the more you witness his presence, the more you recognize his presence, the more believing will be easier. Many want to believe, but struggle because they haven't yet encountered its reality in their lives. We got a hard time believing again because we haven't had a consistent encounter with God that makes us, you know, really agree with believing something that um, is kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? We, we understand that we, our world tells us a lot of things. It shows us a lot of things. Um, and that's because we're plugged in there the most. Then um, if it's contrary to that experience, then we think we're going to have a hard time, you know, believing it because it's not, it's not there. It's not with us. So true belief grows from consistent encounters with spiritual truth, a revelation that creates an unshakable certainty within the soul, ultimately transforming spiritual reality into physical experience. Let's, let's hit it again. True belief grows from consistent encounters with God. True belief grows with consistent encounters with spiritual truth, a revelation that creates an unshakable certainty within the soul, ultimately transforming spiritual reality into physical experience. Experience. So some, you know, some of y'all, hear these things and y'all like, yeah, 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 yeah. But yet you don't produce uh, consistent experiences with God the way he wants and the way that you want. Why? Because you really, 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 really don't, don't believe like, like, like you really think. You got a concept of it and you got a concept of godly things, but we really don't know clearly really how to position ourselves um, in the way that really, man, really fortifies our ability to believe God's way. And it's, it's really understandable. So I'm going to say this. What else plays a pivotal role um, in how we believe God's way? Uh, maybe I'll say what well, it's kind of both. It, what, it's what keeps us from believing God's way. And then the good thing is, is what helps us to believe God's way. So we, we're going to kind of stay with the what keeps us, well, just, just, just 
let me paint the picture. So the mind, the mind is a remarkable ent entity that governs how we process and respond to information, ultimately shaping our thoughts, emotions, decisions, and consciousness. At its core, the mind encompasses five primary, primary elements, which are thoughts, perceptions, emotions, consciousness, and memory. Now, I really don't want to get into all of this, but I, I do think it's good to point out um, what is keeping you from believing the way that you can believe God stuff, thoughts, perceptions, emotions, consciousness, and memory. So in context of spiritual life, particularly in the demonstration of manifestation or the demonstration of the gospel of the kingdom. Now I'm bringing the king kingdom in here because the kingdom should be a place where all of our things, all not only not only all of our needs are met, but um, it's how we it's the place where we exist in our in our supernaturalness. You know, everything that the world needs to witness and then experience to know that God is real. The kingdom is is that atmosphere that gives it. You know what I mean? That makes you that thing. So the, you know, if you hear me kind of use kingdom interchangeably, I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm using the kingdom also because that's really where the place is that makes us that thing. So the role of the mind is pivotal. One may ask, how do we accept the good news, or how do we how do we begin to believe like God? How do we accept the good news of God's kingdom when its reality is it often feels distant? The reality of, of the kingdom in our lives feels distant. We don't have a consistent track record of really, really, really um, believing that is real or believing it to the fact to, or to the point where we consistently display um, its, its reality. So. For heaven to manifest physically, we must become conscious of the authority it will take to manifest its position or God's good news, God's character, God's nature, God's ways, God's breakthroughs. This process involves in uh, this process involves allowing the Holy Spirit to reshape previously held thoughts and perspectives, whether spiritual or carnal. An example, so, so okay, I had, uh, I was, me, me and Chandra were somewhere, I think we were at a coffee shop, and um, I, I, had, I had to put this in my notes, and I'm, I have it in here, uh, and I, I want to, um, I want to paint this pic, pic picture really clearly, because this is what we do. Again, it, it could be good or bad, but in, in this sense, we're using how the mind, in its carnalness, keeps us from being able to believe in the way that 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 God wants us to or be, it keeps us from being able to exist in the spiritual realm even in this physical sense you're still you're still spiritual first so you're your spirit in in this body so the the mind uh, in its carnalness can keep you from existing spiritually uh, so th this example, this is crazy. I, I wonder. I, I don't want to lose my place here, but I'm just going to say it this way. We were in this coffee shop, and there were a lot of people there, and they had their tablets and they had their computers and their phones. And I don't know for some reason, I, I dropped my, my wallet. I was sitting down, and I dropped my uh, wallet. I didn't know it fell. And so, so somebody from behind me on the side, you know, he says, "Hey, you know, I think you dropped your your wallet." So I'm looking around. I said, "Okay, thanks." You know. So I grabbed my, my wallet, put it back in my pocket, or I put it on the table or somewhere. And I started immediately thinking, I said, man, you know, I was just hearing about how people can scan your information so you can be in this place, in this atmosphere, and people are start to use uh, their technology against you. So they have these little programs or these apps or these little ways to do this where they can literally um, uh, 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 get your information from way across the uh the other side of the room and there's so many people doing so many things you don't know what what's going on so i'm thinking about this and i'm like and i immediately start to experience the emotion of it and then the emotion of it 
which in, in essence, it's, it, it's the reality of a, of a potential or it's a potential reality. I started, I was like, hey, man, we, Sean, we need to get, get out of here. You know what I mean? We got to be more careful or something. And I immediately kind of laughed after I thought about it. I was like, wow. I said, so this is where I decide to go in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, God can warn you of things and blah, blah, blah. But most times, um, if you are a citizen of the kingdom, if you and God stuff, he's going to protect you several ways. Yeah, he can remind you of something or he can tell you to get up and go like as Jesus did it, you know, or he can, he, he'll just keep you from destruction. But why did my mind do that? And if you remember earlier, we talked about um, how how the mind is so remarkable and well, wait, what does it say? Um, ultimately shaping our thoughts, emotions, decisions, and consciousness. And, and it was made up of, you know, the thoughts, perceptions, emotions, emotions, consciousness, and memory. So in that moment, my memory was, uh, you know, kind of making my emotions react or my emotions were, were making my memory react, which was causing me to respond in the not so kingdom way. So we have to be very, very conscious of the things that keep us away from the places that God really needs us in. So because in order for us to be what God has made us and, and, and in order for us to really experience the breakthroughs and the, and the blessings and the miracles and all of these things that, that, that the kingdom houses, we have to respond in like nature. So you have to respond almost with kingdom DNA so that when you, when you, when you, when you're responding in the kingdom character and nature and DNA, then it automatically activates God. It automatically does something and causes God to do God's side, to, 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 to do God stuff. So I, I pray that made sense. Um, so By doing so, individuals begin to interpret environments from a fresh set of perspectives, which in turn elicits a new emotional response. So like, I know I just kind of just kind of jumped in there. But again, when we start to live from God's place, when we start to live from the spirit and, and, and have a consistent track record of living by the spirit, then this this lifestyle, this type of thing. This is the thing that, what does it say? It elicits, uh, elicits a new emotional response. This transformation in perception makes a person conscious of possibilities they had not yet considered, enabling them to experience life from a heavenly perspective. Over time, this experience creates new memories and pathways in the brain influencing future responses to both physical and spiritual impulses. So when we learn to live in the spirit, we simultaneously create more depths of belief. Faith is always there. You're going to use your faith a little more accurately. But, but the, 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 the thing is, is as, as we immerse ourselves in the knowledge of spiritual of the spiritual realm, our thoughts become dominated by these divine realities, fostering a conviction that moves these truths from the spiritual to the physical world. Because that's what we're, that's what we're after. Where we're well, first, where we're, we're after existing as God's children. We want to behave like God. We love God. We want to love God more. We want, you know what I mean? Um, God can't love us anymore because He's He's love. But we can participate with Him in a way that just really takes us to the next level. And inside of all of that, we have these experience, experiences consistently of um, uh, receiving. We're in position because we, we're, we're now in a momentum of living by the Spirit, by the Spirit co constantly. We're learning how to obey God. People always say, man, well, how do I, I can't hear God. I, I don't... Yes, you can hear God. Um, most of the time, God, if it's not something really crazy going on, God is the first voice. Now, that's another subject at another time. And I've done a video on it before, but sometimes that can confuse you. But what I'm telling you is 
God speaks, if you know and understand the nature of God, then you can start to obey um, those directives. You know, God is, it may be, it may be one word, it may be a thought, but you can measure the word and you can measure the thought. You can measure the impulse. You can measure the instinct with the nature of, of God and you obey it. The more you obey God, the more you give God more room to talk, the more that you give God or you give yourself more room to hear. Well, and talk because God ain't going to keep talking if you, if you, if you're not going to listen, if, you, if you're not going to obey. Cause so remember, you know, remember that, but the more you do it, the more you hear God, the more you hear God, the more you can obey God, the more louder God gets, the more louder God gets, the more you can obey God, the more you obey God, the more you're living in the spirit, the more you're living in the spirit, the more you're trusted with more of God, the more you're trusted with, with more of God, the more you are able to receive and give and receive and give and receive. So I pray it makes sense. I really want it. I really want to hit home this idea that again, when we, when you position yourself, position yourself in spiritual things, living by the spirit, and it's, it's not so spooky or hocus pocus. It's really not. But you have to allow God the place to do God's stuff so that you start to obey. The more you obey, the more that you're trusted and you receive and that belief just grows and grows. And all of a sudden, that belief turns into knowing. Now you are living from being. You're living from being like God. When you live from being like God, then you start doing from that being. The more you do from that being, the more you have what that place offers you. Woo! I pray it makes sense, people. Pastor Jamal, um, that's it for now. I'll talk to you. Peace.